uppercut, uppercut, Sonic Boom! Well, hello there, humans of these earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Um, this is the T110E5, and it's part of an ongoing series I'm doing. E5 versus Chieftain Mark VI versus Super Conqueror. Talking about the three tanks, which are really the, the hull down heroes of T10, uh, and comparing them. And it's kind of funny because the E5 of all those three tanks is the only tech tree tank. The others are premium. And yet, this is also the only one of those three tanks that didn't really exist, at least anywhere in any great consistency. It was on paper. Sure, it was on paper. Someone did a doodle on the back of a napkin, a napkin and... Uh, over a scotch at the advertising agency for Chrysler and said, hey, how about we do a bit of a tanky McTankerson? And they said, yeah, let's do it. And then they said, no, let's not do it. But later, 50 years later, in fact, Wargaming got together and said, hey, we can use this. This looks like a good tank. And someone's done all these doodles and designs. Uh, they even made a wooden model of it at one point. Let's put it in the game. Now, it was meant to replace the M103, uh, but it never got off the ground. The reasoning is unclear from what i can ascertain because i'm not exactly a tank historian but it was in fact meant to be used obviously in campaigns on the eastern side of continental europe and that meant it was going to have to fit through certain tunnels and that there were restrictions on the width and they never got it through and the m103 was deemed strong enough and they stuck with it the four three tanks that they were going to use the e5 the e4 and the e3 are all in game so it's kind of interesting to me that the m103 the tank that was deemed good enough um already stayed in the game and is the tier 9 and has a much weaker turret than this the e5 which was deemed to be impractical and never made but just goes to show and i don't blame wargaming for that at all because we've got to have tanks in game and it's a great tank and it's a fun tank to play anyway you get the gist it wasn't real. It didn't exist, but we're going to talk about it anyway. <laughs> God, I could talk about things forever. I'm pretty good at this. Yeah, just carrying on like pork chop. It was actually going to be made by Chrysler. Um, and it's funny to me that we do have a Chrysler in game. Um, oh, God. Listen, I'm moving off this. Let's talk about the tank itself. This is a tank that I first reviewed in 2016. Um, let me just hunt up the date for you on that because it is pretty funny to me that I've been doing uh, reviews on these tanks for so very very long um and the e5 back then was a little bit different to the e5 now um the e5 back then had a ginormous big tumor on the top that was 178 millimeters at the front you can see it on the right of screen there and that made it particularly interesting to run around with it was a tank that was brilliant uh, if driven by someone that knew what they were doing and less brilliant if it was driven by someone that didn't know what they were doing. And when I first started Blitz, well, I kind of butchered the E5. It was my first T10. I was sub 50% win rate in it when I first got it. And I eventually dragged that up um, well and truly above the 50s. But it was interesting because I'd played a couple of games before this Battleground Europe, uh, predominantly among them where Hull Down was a tactic that I already knew about heavy tanks. And this is the first line I drove up, the American line. I liked the look of the E5. I particularly liked the look of the M103. It looked very space age and futuristic, which is pretty funny considering that the M103 was a pre-1954 tank. Um, and was in fact not nearly as space age and futuristic <laughs> as others. Look at this guy. This guy. Dear me. Anyway, I digress. The first time I did a video on this was in 2016. And... I loved it, and the video was 43 minutes long. <laughs> because that's how long the videos I made back then were. Like, legit, when I first started this channel, I made videos on tanks that were nearly an hour long. I talked a lot slower, a lot softer, and I was uh, nowhere near as confident as I am now. <laughs> but, you know, um, anyway, I digress again. And the problem with the E5 back then was that, yeah, you had a huge tumor on top, and good players in mediums would just roll heat and smash it all day long and back then heat had no uh negative you could play roll heat and as long as you're willing to pay the cost in terms of credits and gold then you were happy days you could do full damage at full dpm into the heat what is this chieftain doing i can't oh god i remember this game yeah he just look at him 
He drives straight into the middle of four tanks. Doesn't stop. I'm like, negative, negative, negative. And I'm just leaving. I am leaving because he is terrible. Look at him. He's driven straight into them. Six minutes in. With six minutes remaining, he's already dead. Nice yellow, I say. Anyway, we're moving onwards. And then in patch 4.6, the E5 had a haircut. And we lost the top of the E5. We lost that huge turret. And it made all the difference. The turret itself is incredibly strong and very, very hard to pen. With heat, APCR with anything you want. There are some slight weak, spot, weak points around the edges of the mantlet and there is a very, very slim hatch, but you have a solid eight degrees of gun depression. And that means if you get this thing up on its toes, peeking over the edges of ridges, it's incredibly difficult to deal with. Uh, and Everyone knows this now. The E5 has really held the line. And in fact, it's one of the few tanks that was originally in the game that has even improved over time in terms of its performance. And that's saying something for a game that's been around for as long, seven years, for as long as World of Tanks Blitz has. Anyway, you get the idea. The play style hasn't changed at all. In fact, if anything, the playstyle has been more singularly focused into a hull down meta. And it does it better than ever. And the gun handling is grand. Uh, the gun handling, in fact, is just grand for a tier 10 heavy. 2,800 DPM is pretty cool. And it's never had any problems with penetration. I run the refined gun on this. So I get, point, um, I get 0 0.289 dispersion. But... I can easily see why you would not run the refine gun and you'd run the aim time improvement instead. Because let's be honest, when you're peaking quickly with T10 heavies, quite often aim time is more important than dispersion. And it's fairly mobile as well. The armor is pretty odd in that it's got a it's got a bit of a, a funny hull. The M48 a1 pattern, which I'm going to do a review on soon as well, is the same. The E3, the E4, they have varying degrees of thickness. Um, it's always had fantastic heat penetration. And if you go to heat in this, you're running 360 millimeters of pen just about. And that's plenty to get through most stuff very, very quickly. There is a thin strip of armor that is 255 right on the edge where the upper glacis meets the lower glacis. And that's grand. But that's really helpful because it lets you sometimes pull out for hull down shots and still explodes a tiny bit of your lower glacis and still have it turn red for enemy uh, bad guys. Thanks. You get the idea. What it also has been typically, typically American is incredibly thin sides and a butt that is prone to surprise HE attacks and it hurts. You've got a 50 millimeter grill on the back of this thing. So anything that's firing HE is going to absolutely rip you apart. Uh, I always feel hard done by in situations like this where our chieftain basically gave away an entire flank. I've just been moseying around trying to get things done and I didn't want to be back here. Um, and everyone's upset at me because <laughs> look at this. See this IS-4. He can't get the gun down far enough to pen anywhere but my turret. And the turret is just ruby red, which is grand. The IS-4, in fact, is a funny one because it's got pretty much the same gun stats in terms of penetration numbers, but it does not have the E5's wonderful gun handling. Well, wonderful for a heavy anyway. The aim time on this when you're fully dosed up is three seconds, which is legitimately good aim time for a tier 10 heavy. Um, that's running vertical stabilizer and, you know, your, um, everything you can to improve the aim time. Um, the aim time on the IS-4, for instance, is 4.6 seconds. So that gives you an idea on exactly what kind of a boost you're facing here with a tank like the T110E5. The thing that it really has an advantage for me over the Chieftain Mark VI and the Super Conqueror Rex is that it's a tech tree tank that lets you grind other tanks in front of it. To grind this line, you also get the T29 and the T32, which are vastly underrated heavy tanks for their tier. They can both do exactly what I'm doing here with the E5 in terms of going hull down. And look, they don't have the gun handling and they don't have the 
maneuverability of the E5, but they certainly are effective heavies. And I really enjoy it. And they're great trainer tanks for a tank like the E5 used to be, where you had to worry about the turret. Getting to the E5 after playing those tanks is now like a phenomenal thing. And the M103 is a good tank too. It is the real acid test. If you can make the M103 work, then you'll easily be able to make the T110E5 work. Nothing could make this team work. I don't understand why our heavy is left one. The ho Re has just bailed out of one and is driving down the middle of the map along with the E100. And they all went to kill one object 140. Look at, look at my team. I don't know what they're doing. They're in between all the red tanks broadside. I mean, I would have... Yeah, this looks like a loss to me. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm over here, I don't know, capping. I'm on the front line. I was hull down. All we needed was one TD at one and maybe some heavies going the heavy route and things would have been okay. But our E4 also decided to do into the middle of the map and our 183 is now moving up behind me because reasons. I don't know. Watch the gun on the E5 here. I'm going to slot a couple of shots um, that are just nice and easy right between the gap in the wall there as they come in to give my Ho Re and IS-4 the kiss of death. The E4 is gone because an AMX-50B just drove up into the spot that he should have been in anyway. 183 question mark question mark says the E4. I don't know man like why were you in the middle of the map role playing a heavy on this particular map where there is so much red action on the side. We've got one shot already and we're going to hit 183 now and there's a clear. The E100 and the 62A are next on the list to be served up and eaten cold, and that's all right. Um, and we are now got our first little block there, 400 damage, and we're looking to just work the guys behind us while they eat the other dudes. The chat will start soon enough, I'm sure. Kill low HP, no joke. Excellent stuff. Um, and we have the 50B and the VK7201. We gotta clear these guys. The best hope for me actually here is that they come in idiot E5 says the Hori, who drove down the middle of the map in a non-turreted TD and got Yeah, he got wrecked. No joke. So 2k up, we've had a thousand damage, and we're trying to get rid of one of these tanks. The 50B is seeing the 183 is a bigger danger, which is wrong. He should be killing me. But anyway, whatever, whatever helps. And we double tap him. Brilliant. I'm now pushing forward. This is three on three. Could be a lot worse. Our E100, our IS4 rather, has held on for a long time in that corner, which helped us tremendously. Gave us a chance to get rid of these two tanks. But I still have two other tanks coming in behind me. 500 for a max roll. Loving life. And I've got to push through and up. The other guy is going to be coming. Even if I take a hit here from the VK, I've got to get to the other side of the VK so that I can go hull down and face whoever else is incoming, the Cranvan and the Grill. And there's another shot. Noob, says the Ho-Re. Thanks very much, tough guy. Get on my shoulders, buddy. I'll carry you. Um, they're getting close to 1,000. We need to hit this Grill. We've got 455, but look, the odds of him hitting a shot on me from there, even if he goes HE, it's not going to be enough. Yeah, that was never going to do it. And now, suddenly... This is doable. This is absolutely doable. We need to get one of these shots. Gave me that gun depression. Love a little bit of gun depression. Now, he's a one shot, and I'm a slightly high roll for him. And we've got to get the clear. So I'm actually going to do something a little bit dodgy here because he's not going to have time, I don't think, to get his second shot off. If I can just squeeze one out here, I'm going to try and reverse side scrape in and just get a good shot on his edges. You beaut, go that high roll heat. Um, that's the T110E5. Lovely game. 4.5k damage, 4,700. Was that a mastery? It was a mastery indeed. Thank you very much, IS4, for your help. Hoku, I'm sorry uh, the ho re was so bad, but I don't know what he was doing driving down the middle. And um, tough guy. Good on you, tough guy. I'm Bushka. Thank you so much for watching. Look after yourself. Stay safe in the battlefield. And bye for now.